It's been a year since Salesforce announced the acquisition of data visualization company Tableau, and I'm joined by Francois Agenstadt, Chief Product Officer at Tableau, to talk about what's happened in the last 12 months and to look at the Tableau and Salesforce Analytics product roadmaps. Francois, thanks for taking the time uh, and joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So let's start with the acquisition. It was completed, I guess, at least in the US in August. Um, and then as we were talking right before we began recording in the UK later in the fall, um, give me the uh, breakdown on that. And how's, how's the integration been going? Well, it's been an amazing year. I just have to say, what an exciting year for everyone. You know, we announced the acquisition just about a year ago, and then we closed technically in August, but we were still under regulatory review uh, by the UK. So the official, we can actually start talking, wasn't until November in the middle of Dreamforce. So perfect time to start working together. Uh, but it's been a really exciting year. Uh, when I think about joining into Salesforce, it's always you know, scary and intimidating to join a, a bigger company. But from a cultural alignment, the values that Salesforce, ha Salesforce has are incredible, right? Uh, the focus on trust and customer success and innovation and equality really aligned so well with Tableau. And um, we've worked extremely well between the teams, on engineering, on sales, on marketing, on operations, to make this a great win for all of our customers. What about from a product perspective? You know, Tableau, one of the most well-known data visualization tools. Salesforce, of course, leaning more into analytics um, and really sort of building out a platform, not just around CRM, but around all kinds of corporate data. Talk a little bit about the conversations going on uh, around integrating Tableau into the other Salesforce products and you know platform ecosystem as a whole. Well, I think it's it's important just to start a little bit by looking at the bigger picture, which is that you know how does Tableau fit within the Salesforce ecosystem? Um, because Salesforce is the the customer three hundred and sixty company, really about creating. Uh, interactions with customers. And if you think about what our customers are going through, they're going through a big digital transformation. And when they go through a digital transformation, guess what? It creates a data transformation. All of these clouds, all of these services are creating tremendous amounts of data, which is then ripe to be analyzed, visualized, and really, you know, we can unlock the power of all that data so that people can do more with their customer interactions. And so that's really where the potential is. We can now unlock the value of Salesforce data and bring more value to Salesforce. And because Tableau is uh, really focused on choice and flexibility, we can analyze any data, data coming out of Workday, out of SQL Server, out of Snowflake, out of SAP, uh, and really provide an end-to-end -end integrated analytics platform for all of our customers whether they're Salesforce customers or not Salesforce customers, because we really believe in choice and flexibility so that people can analyze their data anywhere they are. You know, and I think that's really kind of important. Something I want to kind of touch on um, in my next question. So, so let's talk a little bit about the product roadmap and moving forward. When, when it comes to Tableau, um, you, you've got uh, two big updates so far in 2020. We've got point one. Um, and that brought some improved admin features as well as things like uh, dynamic parameters and viz animations. Um, and then with the more recent 2020.2, uh, rolled out some new modeling features, set improvements, um, and something that you just touched on, which was the ability to connect Tableau directly to location data in Esri. Um, so maybe talk about that, uh, those, those updates, the features just a bit, and then what's next on the roadmap uh, for Tableau? Well, you know, this is, uh, this is exciting because we're a product company. We're an innovation focused company, you know, since the acquisition was announced a year ago. Uh, we've actually already released four versions of Tableau. So every quarter there's a new release and we're just accelerating our pace of innovation. Um, as you said, this year, we've had two releases, right? We're six months in, so that means two releases, two quarters. Um, 
And what we're doing is we're really listening to our customers. We're listening to the big requests that they have, the big needs and challenges that they're trying to face and seeing how we can make analytics easy. So if you think about the beginning of the year, we added something called dynamic parameters. Well, what is that? Well, from a customer standpoint, it's the number one request from all of our customers of all time. Of all the features that they've wanted us to deliver, this was the top for so many years. And we just got that out there. It enables them to really have their parameters, the, the interactions that they have in the product to be live and always refreshed. We added uh, animation so that data feels like it's moving. It tells a story by seeing how it transitions. Uh, but we didn't stop there. We continue to listen to customers. And in our 2020.2 release, uh, which came out uh, just a few weeks ago, we added a new data model so that people could analyze more complex data more easily. It's really a, a, a game changer in the platform. And some people have described it as the biggest improvement and the biggest change to Tableau in a decade. That's how meaningful that is. Uh, we added a capability called metrics, which helps people keep track of their KPIs or their key performance indicators and keep it right there on their phone so they can see it anytime, anywhere. And of course, we're not done. There's more capabilities coming because there's a new quarter that we're about to start. So there's going to be a new version of Tableau and we're going to keep listening to our customers. We're going to keep delighting them. Uh, we're going to add more features around analytics, around self-service, around enterprise, around cloud, around Salesforce. Uh, I got to tell you, the future is bright. There's so much coming. I'm so excited about the road ahead. So let's talk about Salesforce analytics a, li a little more broadly. Talk about the integration with Tableau into the, the bigger analytics uh, platform and then what we can kind of expect uh, in the future. You, you kind of alluded to that already. Well, you know, Salesforce has been on this journey of data and analytics for, for many different, many years. Uh, it started with Einstein Analytics, which was really anal analytics built into Salesforce, optimizing, right, the CRM workflow. We then expanded that with MuleSoft. And MuleSoft is an integration platform, but what it does from an analytics standpoint is it unlocks more data to be used for analysis. So really thinking beyond just Salesforce, but really any system and how do we unlock that data? Then we added Datarama to the mix for marketing integration and really harmonizing all marketing sources. And then Tableau fits on top of all, it all to really provide analytics at the enterprise-wide level. So really a, a broad stack of capabilities to help customers do more. So as we think about you know, where we're gonna go from here, first is we're gonna make it so easy to visualize, explore, analyze all Salesforce data, whether it's sales cloud or service cloud, marketing cloud or commerce cloud, we really wanna make visual analytics on top of Salesforce so easy. The second is we're gonna lean into artificial intelligence, machine learning uh, by leveraging the power of Einstein, which has been really a game changer for Salesforce customers. But we're gonna take Einstein's predictive capabilities and weave that more deeply into the platform. And because we're all about innovation, we're gonna to look to accelerate the innovation and find new ways to leverage Salesforce technologies to bring even more value to Tableau customers. You know, I think that's a really interesting point, uh, especially when it comes to visualizations. As someone who used to work uh, in social science research way back uh, before I was in IT and certainly in the tech media, um, but who looked at a lot of data analytics um, or research data and then tried to sort of bring that data together to help tell a story to enable um, decision makers to actually take action based on the data. Um, visualizations uh, were really important for doing that. And, and I think it was sometimes hard uh, to, to build a visualization that sort of told the right story uh, or that told uh, a story that people, in a way that people could understand. Talk a little bit about maybe how AI could help build those kind of visualizations. I mean, I, I guess make it a little easier to pick out the relevant story points to say, oh, look, it does look like there's a correlation here between these two data points. C can you speak to that a little bit? 
Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I'll start first by saying that vision is one of our most powerful senses. And the reason that visualizations are, are so useful is that the, your eyes can really perceive what's going on in the data so much better than say looking at a tabular report, which is what we used to do. And so what really Tableau has done is leverage visualization technology to help people understand what the data means. And we like to say that it's not really about the visualization, it's about using the visualization to make sense of the data, but enable the next question and the next question and the next question. And so we really think about helping people think with data, right? That's the core. And so when you take that premise and then you start thinking of how does AI fit into the, that equation? Well, if a lot of the technologies have been used to look at what happened in the past. So what happened? Now we're adding, why did it happen? And that's where you can use AI technologies to pull out the why in the data. And then you can go one step further with predictive analytics to say what might happen in the future. And so there's this continuum of questions. And then you can also, so you start thinking of, you know, what's going on? Why is it going on? What might happen? How can I change it? Uh, but then you can also use AI technologies to start you know, uncovering hidden insights in the data. If you're trying to maximize profit, well, we can crunch the numbers on behalf of the users and tell you, hey, these are some factors that have the biggest impact on profit. Here's what you might want to do. And really using AI, you can really pull out insights automatically for the humans, for the, for the person doing the work, so that they can do their jobs better, faster, and deliver more value to the organization. You know, Francois, that, that leads me to my last question. I'd like to get your thoughts on the use of data analytics and visualizations uh, to help companies, to help governments address big problems. Um, you know, we were talking about right then, you gave a great example of maximizing profits. But often these same tools are used to address these big social issues like the COVID-19 pandemic. And I know that this has been at the forefront of what uh, Mark Benioff and Salesforce has really wanted to do is helping to use its tools uh, like the uh, recently announced work.com platform how do you see uh, Tableau fitting into that, into helping, um, helping us address some of those kind of pressing social issues? Well, you know, data is so powerful, right? It can give you insights into companies, it can give you insights into pandemics, it can give you insights into how our communities are, are doing. And it's really pretty incredible to think that, you know, data has really gone mainstream through this pandemic. You know, I think everybody's heard of flattening the curve. We're all seeing, right, the curves on TV and, and how we're doing. We're all looking at the data every single day. You know, how many new cases, how many new deaths, how, many, how much testing. So we are living, right, in a data world right now, and it's gone everywhere. And we've seen the power that that data has to shape policy, to shape our communities to shape our behaviors because we might act differently based on you know, how, what the data is telling us, but it's really gone mainstream. Um, and you know, in partnership with, with Salesforce, what we try to do is really showcase the power of that data, but not just here's the data, there it is, but you know, the different ways that you can visualize it, which um, counties are, uh, growing faster than others, which ones, you know, have um, uh, correlations to health factors or racial factors, and really trying to connect that data and help people visualize that. And we launched this COVID data hub. It's been seen by millions of people. But what's more exciting is that there's been more than 20,000 people, 20,000 visualizations created out of that data that people are communicating Right, the impact of COVID in their communities and they're visualizing it and combining it with other, other things. But as we're going into you know, the uh, reacting to the crisis, to getting back to work, to setting ourselves up back uh, to growth, you know, and getting back to work, well, guess what? We're looking at pandemic data, COVID data, and where are our impacted populations. We're looking at 
local uh, government regulations and which phase of reentry are we in. We're combining that with our employee data to see what is that our at-risk population, where are people. And so data and analytics is a fundamental part of work.com, of helping people get back to work and really minimize their risks and manage the well-being of their employees and really ensure that their companies, their organizations are set up for long-term success. And as we get out of the re-entry mode and we uh, get ready for growth, well, guess what? Data is how we're gonna use uh, the insights to help power the next generation of our companies. It's a really exciting time. Well, Francois, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Thank you again very much. My pleasure, Bill. It's been great to be here. And thank you for watching. You can see more coverage of Trailhead DX at Tech Republic and ZDNet.